Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shiri Away Read Aloud Container, where we've been reading um, Hazrat Inyat Khan's The Mysticism of Sound and Music. And today we're reading chapter 22, um, which is titled Spiritual Attainment by the Aid of Music. So I'll start off and then if anyone wants to pick up after me, um, I welcome it. Before commencing this subject, I should like to explain first what the word spiritual means. Is it goodness that may be called spiritual? Or is it wonder working, a power to produce miracles, or a great intellectual power? The answer is no. The whole of life in all its aspects is one music and to, the to, and to tune oneself to the harmony of this perfect music is the real spiritual attainment. You may ask, what is it that keeps man back from spiritual attainment? The answer is that, it, oh, I'm sorry, the answer is that in its denseness of this material existence, and the fact that man is unconscious of his spiritual being divided into limitations. This prevents that free flow and free movement that are the nature and character of life. What do I mean by this denseness? There is a rock and you want to produce sound from it. It does not give resonance. It does not answer your desire to produce sound, but the string or wire will give an answer to the tone you want. You strike it, and it answers. There are objects that give resonance to sound. You wish to produce a sound in them, and they resound. They make your music complete. So it is with human nature. One person is heavy and dull. You tell him something, or her something, and they cannot understand. You speak to them, they will not hear you. They will not respond to music, to beauty, or art. What is it? It is denseness. There is another person who is ready to appreciate and understand music and poetry, or beauty in any form, in character, in manner, in every form, beauty is appreciated by such a person. It is this that is the awakening of the soul. That is the living condition of the heart. It is this that the real that is the real spiritual attainment. Spiritual attainment is to make the spirit live, to become conscious. When someone is not conscious of soul and spirit, and is only conscious of ma the material being, they are damn dense. They are away from spirit. Would anyone else like to pick up? If not, I can continue. Yeah, no worries. You may ask what is spirit and what is matter? The difference between spirit and matter is as the difference between water and snow. Frozen water is snow and melted snow is water. It is spirit in its denseness that we call matter. It is matter in its fineness that may be called spirit. Once a materialist said to, to me, I do not believe in any spirit or soul or hereafter. I believe in eternal matter. I said to him, your belief is not very different from mine. Only that which you call external matter, I call spirit. It is a difference in terms. That is not a thing to dispute about because we both believe in eternity. So long as we meet in eternity, what difference does it make? If the one calls it matter and the other calls it spirit, it is one life from beginning to end. Beauty is born of harmony. What is harmony? Harmony is right proportion, in other words, right rhythm. And what is life? Life is the outcome of harmony. 
at the back of the whole of cre of the creation is harmony and the whole secret of creation is harmony intelligence intelligence longs to attain to the perfection of harmony what may, what people call happiness and comfort or profit and gain all they long for and wish to attain is harmony in smaller or greater proportion they are longer longing <laughs> for harmony even in attaining the most mundane things, they always wish for harmony, but often they do not adopt right ma methods. Often people's methods are wrong. The object attained by both good and bad methods is the same, but the way one tries to attain it turns the object into right or wrong. It is not the object that is wrong. It is the way one adopts to attain it. No one, whatever their situation in life, wishes for disharmony, for all suffering, pain, and trouble are disharmony. To attain spiritually is to realize that the whole universe is one symphony in which every individual is one note. Their happiness lies in becoming perfectly harmonious with the symphony of the universe. It is not following a certain religion that makes one spiritual, or having a certain belief, or being a fanatic in regard to one idea, or become, becoming too good to live in this world. Many people there are, many good people there are, who do not even understand what spirituality means. They are very good, but they do not yet know what ultimate good is. Ultimate good is harmony itself. For instance, all the different principles and beliefs of the religions of this world taught and proclaimed by priests and teachers, but that people are not always able to follow and express, come naturally from the heart of people who attune themselves to the rhythm of the universe. Their every action, every word they speak, every feeling they have, every sentiment they express is all harmonious. It is all virtuous, all virtues, it is all religion. It is not following a religion, it is living a religion, making one's life a religion that is necessary. Oh, this is so aligned. Music is the miniature of the whole harmony of the universe. For the harmony of the universe is music itself and people being the miniature of the universe must show the same harmony. In their pulsation, in the beat of their heart, in their, in their vibration, they show rhythm, and tone, harmonious or inharmonious chords. Their health or illness, their joy or discomfort, all show the music or lack of music in one's life. What does music teach us? Music helps us to train ourselves in some way or other in harmony. And it is, it is this that is magic or the secret behind music. When you hear music that you enjoy, it tunes you and puts you in harmony with life. Therefore, people need music. They long for music. Many say they do not care for music, but they have not heard music. If they really heard music, it would touch their souls, and then certainly they cannot help loving it. If not, it only means that they have not heard music sufficiently and have not made their heart calm and quiet in order to listen to it, to enjoy and appreciate it. Besides, music develops that faculty by which one learns to appreciate all that is good and beautiful. In the form of art and science, in the form of music and poetry, in every aspect of beauty, one can then appreciate it. What deprives people of all the beauty around them is the heaviness of their body or the heaviness of their heart. They are pulled down to earth and by that everything becomes limited. When people shake off that heaviness and feel joyous, they feel light. All good tendencies such as gentleness, tolerance, forgiveness, love, appreciation, and appreciation, all these beautiful qualities come by being light light in mind, soul, and body. Where does music come from? Where does the dance come from? 
It all comes from the spiritual, uh, natural spiritual life that is within. When that spiritual life springs forth, it lightens all the burdens that uh, people may have. It makes their life smooth, floating on the ocean of life. The faculty of appreciation makes one light. Life is just like the ocean. When there is no appreciation, no receptivity, people sink like pieces of iron to the bottom of the sea. They cannot float like the boat that is hollow, that is receptive. The difficulty in the spiritual path is always what comes from ourselves. People do not like to be a pupil. <laughs> they like to be a teacher. <laughs> If people only knew that the greatness and perfection of the great ones who have come from time to time to this world was in their pupilship and not in teaching, the greater the teacher, the better pupil they were. They learned from everyone, the great and the lowly, the wise and the foolish, the old and the young. They learned from their lives and studied human nature in all its aspects. The one who learns to tread the spiritual path must become as an empty cup in order, in order that the wine of music and harmony may be poured down into their hearts. You may ask, how can one become an empty cup? I shall tell you how cups show themselves filled instead of being empty. Often a person comes to me and says, here I am. Can you help me spiritually? And I answer, yes. But then they say, I want to know, first of all, when, what you think about life and death or about the beginning and the end. And then I wonder what their attitude will be if, previously conceived opin if their previously conceived opinion does not agree with mine. They want to learn, yet they don't want to be empty. That means going to the stream of water with one's cup covered up wanting the water, and yet the cup is closed, filled with preconceived ideas. Where have the preconceived ideas come from? No, no idea can be called one's own. All ideas have been learned from one source or another, but in time, one comes to think that they are one's own. For those ideas, one will argue and dispute, although they do not satisfy fully. At the same time, they are one's battleground and all the time and all the time they will keep the cup covered up mystics therefore have adopted a different way they have learned a different course and that course is self effacement or in other words unlearning what one has learned they say in the east that the first thing first thing that is learned to understand how to become a pupil. I'm gonna read that again. They say in the East that the first thing that is learned is to understand how to become a pupil. They do not learn first learn what God is or what life is. The first thing to learn is how to become a pupil. One may think that in this way one loses one's individuality, but what is individuality? It is not that which is it's not that which is collected. What one's ideas, what are one's ideas and opinions? They are just collected knowledge. This should be unlearned. And how can one unlearn? You would say that the character of the mind is such that one learns, what, what one learns is engraved upon it. And then how can one unlearn it? Unlearning is completing knowledge. To see a person and say, that person is wicked, that is learning. To see further and recognize something good in that person, that is unlearning. When you see the goodness in someone who you have called wicked, you have unlearned. You have unraveled that knot. You have once said, I hate that person, that is learning. And then you say, oh no, I can like him or I can pity him. When you say that, you have seen with two eyes. First you learn by seeing with one eye, then you learn to see with two eyes. That makes sight complete. All that we have learned in this world is partial knowledge. 
And when this is uprooted by another point of view, then we have acknowledged, then we have acknowledged it. Wait, I'm sorry. All that we have learned in this world is partial knowledge. And when this is uprooted by another point of view, then we have knowledge in its completed form. This, that is called mysticism. <laughs> Why is it called mysticism? Because it cannot be put into words. Words will show us one side of it, but the other side is beyond words. The whole manifestation is duality. The duality that makes us intelligent and beyond duality is unity. If we do not rise beyond duality and go towards unity, we do not attain the perfection that is called spirituality. This does not mean that our learning is of no use. It is of great use. It gives us the power of discrimination, of discerning differences. This makes the intelligence sharp and the sight keen so that we understand the value of things and their use. It is all part of human evolution and all useful. So we must learn first and unlearn afterwards. You do not look at you do not look first at the sky when you are standing on earth. First, look at the earth and see what it offers you to learn and to observe. Ooh. But at the same time, do not think that your life's purpose is fulfilled by looking only at the earth. The fulfillment of life's purpose is looking at the sky. Whew. Whew. I'm sorry, that was a bar. Uh, Shay, I'm just looking at the chat. This is ringing bells for me. Okay, I'm going to read the last couple paragraphs. Oof. <sighs> what is wonderful about music is that it helps man or woman or people to concentrate or meditate independently of thought. Therefore, music seems to be the bridge over the gulf between the form and the formless. If there is anything intelligent, effective, and at the same time formless, it is music. Poetry suggests form, line, and color suggests form, but music suggests no form. Music also produces that resonance that vibrates through the whole being. It lifts the thought above the denseness of matter. It almost turns matter into spirit into its original condition. Through the harmony of vibrations, touching every atom of one's whole being, beauty, beauty of line and color can go so far and no further. The joy of being, I'm sorry, the joy of fragrance can go a little further. Music touches our innermost being and in that way produces new life. A life that gives exaltation to the whole being, raising it to that perfection in which lies the fulfillment of people's lives. Thank you all for listening. Um, and I welcome anyone who is listening to this asynchronously to please join us on Saturday afternoon at 11 a.m. or Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Louisiana time to unpack this chapter. I am really looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, thanks again. <laughs>